David Halls once again, who investigators say when they first talked to him admitted he did not properly check the gun before handing it to Baldwin. Martha? Jonathan, thank you very much. So, Assistant Director David Hall's attorney, Lisa Tarako, joins me now exclusively. Lisa, thank you very much uh, for being here. Obviously, this is a very uh, tragic situation, and you heard in Jonathan's report that the, what we have learned from the uh, investigation, the early discussion that Mr. Hall's had with the investigators, he said that he should have checked, um, he should have checked that gun more thoroughly to make sure that there were no live rounds in it. Is that, do you stand by that statement of your client? Well, I, before we start on that note, I just want to say that this tragedy is overwhelming to all of us. I mean, it's, it's deeply saddening to my client. It's overwhelming to our community here, the film community, and our condolences go out to the Hutchins family. And I think it's extra hard for my client because not only is he so overwhelmed with sadness, but now the target of the investigation, people are starting you know, to point fingers at him, and it, it's 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 overwhelming. And, Is it um, true that there have been a couple of other incidences out. on other sets where his um, oversight was, was questioned uh, in in other movies, and will that be relevant in this investigation? Well, let me go back to your very first question, and your first question had to do with um, the responsibility, and I want to start with the fact that. In the affidavits, it states that my client grabbed the gun off of a prop cart and handed it to Baldwin. That absolutely did not happen. That absolutely did not happen. Um, in addition to me presenting not only what Mr. Halls has told me, but we, our defense team, has interviewed witnesses. And some of those witnesses that we've talked to, when we talked to them, they hadn't even been interviewed by the police yet. And those witnesses also confirm that they remember that the armor or the armor's assistant brought in the firearm, brought it onto the set. So this idea that my client grabbed the gun off of a prop cart and handed it to Mr. Baldwin absolutely did okay. not happen. So, so what you're saying and is that, even, that hold on, let me, say, let me just right talk on that for a second. So are you saying that Hannah yes, Gutierrez Reed handed the gun to him or that another assistant handed the gun to him? And if so, who, who handed the gun to him? Okay, one of the problems that some of the witnesses have had is that um, most of the crew knew each other, but not all of the crew knew the armors. So the armors were relatively new to this particular crew. And both of the armor and the assistant armor were women in their 20s. And so some of the witnesses are getting confused whether the armor came in or the assistant armor. But regardless whether it was the armor that brought the firearm on the set or the assistant armor that brought the firearms on set. My client did not bring the armor, did not bring the firearm But the point is that someone he handed it to him, did, did someone, hand, did, he, does he know who handed him the gun before he handed it to Alec Baldwin? Well, I think you're twisting the facts just a little bit. And, and let me just back up just a little bit, if I may. Um, the armor brings the gun in. And another really important fact that we found out is that there was another member of the crew who also checked the firearm. Because when Mr. Halls gives a safety meeting, he announces to the group, we're gonna have, you know, there's gonna be a firearm on set. Everyone has the right to inspect the firearm as soon as it comes on set before we begin to rehearse or begin to shoot. And so there was another crew member who our team has spoken to who confirms that he also checked the firearm at the time when the armor brought the firearm okay. on set. But I need you to just nail something down here. Did Dave Halls hand the gun to Alec Baldwin? That's a very straightforward question. Did he hand the gun that was used and that killed Helena Hutchinson? Hey, Helena Hutchins, did he hand it to Alec Baldwin or not? Here's here's what I'm trying here's here's what I'm trying to tell you. When I answer a question, I want to make sure that it's consistent with all of the facts. I don't want to answer a question to you and have and later be proven wrong. So we've tried, that's why we haven't spoken out for a, over a week, is I want to make sure that I've got the facts right. I have received information from crew members that the armor handed it directly to Baldwin, and then Baldwin put it inside where his uh, holster would be, 
and then at some point he he pulled the firearm out and he wanted to adjust um, the holster and then he hands the firearm to Mr. Halls who immediately hands it right back after he's adjusted the holster. Other witnesses have said that um, the armor brought the firearm in, that they checked the firearm, that, that my client checked the firearm, there was another crew member that checked the firearm, and that she handed it to him like a pass-through, and that he then handed it immediately over to Baldwin because he was between the two. So I can't tell you verbatim what happened. These people are overwhelmed by the grief and the shock. My client went through something that was such a freak accident that he's in shock. I mean, he's having a hard time sorting out So you're out saying he doesn't know was. whether or not he handed the gun to Alec Baldwin. Is that what you're telling us right now? He doesn't know if he handed it to no, him? No, of course I'm... No, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, is I want to put all the facts together. Okay, but you're... you're I want to deal with evidence. You, you said you cannot confirm that it didn't go directly from the armorer to Baldwin. So that's... What? If this is a very direct question. Did your client hand the gun to Alec Baldwin right before he fired the gun and shot Helena Hutchins? Hutchins. Did he hand it to him? Was he the last person to touch it before Baldwin? Um, the, first of all, I wasn't there. No, what did he tell you? Tell you what, my what did he tell you? Members? About what happened? It's did he not, say I handed it to Alec Baldwin? Or did he say I didn't hand it to him? I've explained what has happened on set. The armor brought the firearm into the scene. The armor's responsible to make sure the firearm is safe. The armor opens the revolver, opens the round. My client didn't load the, load, load the firearm. My client didn't point the firearm at anyone, and my client didn't pull the trigger. So the armor comes in, the armor opens the firearm, my client looks at it, and uh, one of the other crew members also checks it. Whether or not he handed the firearm directly to Alec Baldwin at that moment, or whether the armor handed it to, directly to Alec Baldwin at that moment, doesn't really matter because he didn't load it. He's not responsible okay, for checking uh, you it. Can, that, that can Ask be your perspective on it, but you know what we're hearing from all these other armors and specialists who handle weapons is that every single person in the chain of custody of the weapon has the responsibility to spin it, to look at it, to check it, from Alec Baldwin to the assistant director to the armor. Now, you're leaving a lot of, I mean, I understand why, as his attorney, you're leaving um, you know, things as sort of open as you can as this investigation goes forward, but there's also uh, testimony from the investigators that said that he advised them that he should have checked it. Can you confirm or deny that part of the story before I let you go? Okay, what I can tell you is that expecting an assistant director to check a firearm is like telling the assistant director to check the camera angle or telling the assistant director to check sound or lighting. That's not the assistant director's job. If he chooses to check the firearm because he wants to make it sure, make sure that everyone's safe, he can do that, but that's not his responsibility. It's just like he's not the camera operator, he's not the mm -hmm. sound operator, he's not the armor. So that I disagree with the other reports that are coming out. And I think that this is such a tragedy. This is su something that is so that. the deviation of norm. Yeah, it's awful. All right, I mean, we, we got to leave, leave it there. Um, I, I hope you'll come back because, you know, we obviously have conflicting reports here and conflicting reports about the responsibility of the assistant director uh, and what his duty is with regard to these to these weapons on the set and why there would even be something on the set. This was not a prop gun. This was a real gun. Um, so why that would even be allowed on the set, why any live ammo would be allowed anywhere near the set, all are questions for the for your client, uh, for the assistant director on the set. So um, obviously we're just at the beginning of this investigation. I hope you'll come back as we move forward. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thanks for coming in. Thank I do you. appreciate it. All right.